Let's say that you want to clone an issue. While there's a couple of different methods to do that, there's a completely free and basic way of doing this all built into Jira's interface. In this video, I'm going to give you the exact steps that you need to follow and some tips and tricks for how to clone your issues. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Let's jump into today's video. So in order to do this, you're going to want to go into your issues and we're going to want to pick the issue of your choice. Now I am going to start with an epic and I'm reason I'm doing this is because I want to show you how cloning works at the various levels of the issue type hierarchy. And so we're going to start at the top. And the reason I want to start at the top is because most of the time, if you're doing this in a strategic way, you want to start with an epic that epic should have issues below it, stories and tasks and bugs. And then some of those stories, tasks, or bugs may have subtasks. And so ideally, you want to take a copy of all of those issues and just kind of like make a new one. But out of the box, spoilers, you cannot do that. This is not allowed. Now you will see that there's other ways of doing it in this video, which I'm going to talk about in the second half. So make sure you stick around for the whole video. But for this first part, I'm going to show you just what you can do for free out of the box. So we're going to take our epic. Now you can do this in this view here where you're inside of this like issue view for detail view, or you can click on the epic itself and this will open you up in a whole new window. The technique is going to work the same way either way. Now, once you find an issue that you want to clone, and I'm actually not going to pick this one. I'm going to pick one that I know has a story associated. As you can see, this one has a task. I'm going to come over here to this ellipsis here where it says actions next to the ET fingers, and now I'm going to click on clone. This clone here that you see is the out of the box clone functionality. This is free. This is free to use. This is, comes with everybody's Jira. If you're looking and you see this deep clone up here, make sure you stay tuned, make sure you subscribe, make sure you drop a like, because that's what we're going to cover in the second half of this video. But for the first part, let's just click on this clone button. So when I click on this clone button, as you can see, all you're going to get is a prefix that is added clone and the word test. Now you can change this prefix. You have to be a site administrator to get that change. It's not a big deal because all you got to do is come over here, remove this text and then add whatever new text for your new clone. When you hit clone, it's going to go and do it. And now you can click on this open clone issue and you're going to see that you have your clone here. This is my test too. It's still an epic and it linked it to the original, to the source. You could, if you don't want that, you can just click the little X, remove the linking, and that's it. You're, you pretty much have cloned an epic. But the stories didn't get cloned, so which is really the bad part. This is the really disheartening thing is this cloning functionality, while cool and useful, could be a lot better. But rest assured, there's plugins that are going to help us out with that. But let's now assume that we want to clone a story. So we're going to go back to that original issue that I cloned, not this new destination one, but my original source. And you'll notice that in this one, I do have a child. I have a task. And when I click on that task, you'll notice that I have a subtask. And so when I go to the action button here, you'll notice that when I do my clone, I'm still prompted to rename it or to give it the name. I don't want clone, so I'm just going to go task 11. But now I have options. I can include the attachments, the subtask, and links. And so I'm just going to include attachments and subtasks, even though I have no attachments. And I'm going to hit clone. And so when I do that, you watch a little paint dry. Jira is doing its magic behind the scenes. And then you're going to get this notification that you can open your cloned issue. So we'll click on that. Here is our new task. Since I did update the, the, the prefix here, this title does not contain the word clone. But I wasn't given the option to update the title of the subtask. So you're going to inherit whatever is set for your properties at the global level of Jira when you clone issues. And then like with the epic, we are linked to the original and we can always kill that off if you don't want it. And that's pretty much it. That's how the cloning feature works. So if you're trying to clone an epic and just make one to one epics, great. So why do we want to clone? So we want to clone because we retain the field data. We retain that information that the report of the assignees, right? All that information that we have in our fields, we basically make carbon copies. So at the epic level, this is cool. 
at the task level, at the story level, being able to bring in those subtasks is also very important because now we can kind of do a two-stepper, right? We can clone the epic, then we can go cl clone the children, and then link them back up to the right epic. Now, that's the way to use cloning inside of Jira. But if you want to be a little bit more advanced, then you can actually do what's called a deep clone. Now, this is a third-party plugin. I'm not sponsored by them, and I'm actually very, very sad that I have to make this part of the video because I used to use this amazing free clone template plugin that used to be so good, but the vendor decided to kill it off due to some political proprietary thing that Atlassian was arguing with them or whatever. They actually reached out to me like a year ago when I made my first video on the subject where I was like, man, I was so sad that they killed off that plugin. But we all have to use what's probably the best cloning plugin here, which is Deep Clone. So in order to do this, I'm going to actually go back to an epic and I'm going to go grab the original epic that has that all that relationship already created for me, where I have the epic, the subtasks, the children, and then the subtasks. And so I am going to this time go to the actions and click Deep Clone to kind of show you how this one works. All right. So when I do this one, it's going to ask you, do you want to do a single clone? Well, that's cloning the epic without any issues, but I don't want to do that because we can do that for free. So don't buy deep clone if you're just going to pick single clone. We want to do epic clone. This is the reason why we're buying it. Because when you clone the epic and all of these issues, then you're going to be able to say, okay, so where do you want to go? Well, we're going to go to the same project. And then it's going to go and find the issues and all the properties. And now we get a lot of options. We can clone all the subtasks. We can uh, copy over our components or versions, attachments, comments, and it's going to tell you how much of each are in there. You can control the prefix. So you can get rid of that if you don't want to put a prefix. You can add the link and it'll do the clone by. And then it's going to give you like a summary of like what's going to happen. What's going to happen here? We want to select this option here for issue gems missing required fields and cannot be cloned. So we're going to create and confirm the issue. And then once you're ready, you get to pick do you want to do it now or later? then the reason this is having a problem is because I had a required field in there. So I'm basically telling it, go put in this information now. So I'm just going to go hit create there. And it's just going to go through each one and basically cause me to fill it out. So I just can't, I'm going to have to fill out every required field, which is a little annoying, but it's good because it's going to be thorough. It's going to make sure that you're doing this correctly. And I actually like that functionality. So, so kudos to the deep clone folks for, for adding that functionality. As you can see, it's giving me a progress report of, how complete we're going and it's just taking care of business it's what i really like though is that it's preserving all the relationships all the field information and you're basically able to carbon copy so if you organize all your issues in epics and now you want to take that and basically repeat that work for like another phase or another milestone you can just carbon copy all this stuff rather than sitting there and manually having to recreate everything so once you're done you can click on this view all five issues it'll show you uh jql of everything that got done or you can just hit close and you're done. And that's pretty much it. Now, now that you've done that, you've successfully cloned everything. And this time we preserved the entire linkage of all the issues. So it's up to you to decide whether you the free version is enough or if you want to bump yourself up and pay for the paid version of the deep clone. I really do like the deep clone. I think it's worth the money. There's very few plugins that I think are kind of worth it. Custom Trust for Jira is one of them and the deep clone is another one. But it really just depends how much time are you and your team spending cloning issues. Now, I personally have hardly ever cloned anything. I'm most of the work that I'm working on is usually pretty unique where I'm creating brand new stories anyways. But if you find yourself in a situation where you're templatizing a lot of your work, then you may want to consider this. That's it for this video. You found value. Make sure you subscribe to that button down there, that red one that says subscribe. Make sure you hit that. Make sure that you drop a like and share this video with all your friends, coworkers, peers, teammates, everybody that you know that can benefit from having access to over 350 different Jira related videos. That's it for this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now.